So this video will be showing you how to install the spindle motor on a DLNCD. The tools required are a two and a half millimeter Allen, a three millimeter Allen, a 3 16 standard Allen. The, the hardware required is six 5 16 national course flatheads, one inch long. This is provided hardware by HSD to mount the cooling plate. This is an electrical connector for the fan override. And this is a piece of eight millimeter key stock for mounting the motor to the plate. So this is the mounting plate for the motor that we make. Um, if you are going to be replacing an existing motor that has failed or for whatever other reason needs replacement, this will be taken off of your old machine. These are the T-nuts that we use to mount the motor to this plate into these six holes. This is an HSD cooling plate that again, if you're replacing an old motor, will have to be taken off your old motor and placed onto your new motor. And this is how the motors come out of the box. Next, we'll be showing how to mount the cooling plate and attach the fan override switch. We'll need a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench and we'll take this cover plate off. This will be going back on, so be sure to keep this hardware and not lose any of the pieces. So typically these motors have an electrical cooling fan up here, but due to the high demands of this motor, we've decided to opt for a cooling plate with air injection. So with that being said, we have to pull this a little electrical connector out, which is used to power the electrical fan and install the override switch so that the motor knows that the fan is not being used. So we'll be accessing this electrical connection for the fan. It's kind of tricky to get. It's buried in there pretty good. Again, if you're replacing an old motor, this will have to be removed from the old motor and put onto the new motor. It's buried in there pretty good, but it can come out. So this is the fan override connection that needs to be clipped into here. And if you're replacing an old motor, this will have to be removed from the old motor and used on the new motor. It's got a release clip here, and these are directional, so they can only go on one way. It'll clip on. Make sure the retaining clip clips in and locks into place. And that has been done. Then this can go back inside out of harm's way. And that is now complete. We can put this cover plate back on. Got it all upside down. Next, we will be mounting the cooling plate to the top of the motor. This will require a three millimeter Allen wrench. And we'll simply take the cooling plate and line it up with the hardware. This is a directional plate that only goes on one way. If you are replacing an old motor in the field, you will be required to use this off of the old motor. So it will need to be removed and used on the new motor.
So next we will be using the T-nuts to mount the motor to the mounting plate. So we'll start by flipping the motor over. We'll do this carefully, removing the protector inserts. <clears throat> These will slide in. Again, if you're replacing an old motor, these parts will have to be reused with your new motor. The piece of key stock will go into the motor, again, reused from an old motor being replaced. We'll remove this rubber cap, get the mounting plate. <clears throat> we'll be lining up the key stock with the machined groove. <clears throat> It's important to note when installing the motor to the mounting plate that this trap plate here should be pressed all the way up against the motor. This helps seal the motor itself from any debris and dust and sawdust from getting up towards the motor. With the mounting plate tied up against the motor, we will now install the 5 16 National Course flatheads into these holes. Now that the bolts are snug, the motor's a little unstable standing up like this. So I like to set the motor down on its side, which allows me to adequately tighten the bolts without the motor trying to tip over. To install the motor, we will now be using six 3 8 national course one inch long socket heads, a 5 16 allen on an extension and a ratchet or a standard allen will work, and then two 3 8 national course nuts to hold the motor on the bearing plate while we install it. So next we'll be mounting the motor to the bearing plate. I like to use two set screws to hang the motor from and that kind of helps hold the motor in place while I get the bolts lined up. And then I use the two jam nuts to keep the motor from falling off. We will now be installing the rest of the mounting hardware using the 3 8 one inch long socket heads. We'll now remove the set screw that we used to hold the motor in place while we got the mounting bolts in and replace it with the same socket head that we use to mount the motor. Then simply repeat this process on the other side with the same three mounting holes. So the last step will be to remove the foam and connect the electrical cable as well as the air lines all being reused from the old motor that's being replaced. When reinstalling the motor cable it's very important to make sure that that the pins on the cable on here are lined up correctly with the pins on the motor. They are very fragile and can bend or break quite easily. So it's important not to force anything and to really make sure that the housing here is meshing correctly with the housing on the motor and just get it seated. And then replace this small bolt with the two and a half millimeter Allen through here. Sometimes you have to push down on the cable in order to get it seated properly. And that bolt 
gets reinstalled. And then this bigger bolt with the five millimeter Allen also goes back down here. When reinstalling the airline, we'll put the bigger 3 8 clear airline in the cooling plate fitting. And then since I left this reducer on this airline, I know that it goes to this port right here. So I'll plug that back in. And this airline without the reducer will go into the reducer on the port on the left hand side. And that is now complete.